Uh, okay, guys, thank you very much. As you know, my name is David Pokrajac, and today I will present my joint work with uh, Sasha Spasevich. Sasha, unfortunately, could not be here uh, or there physically, but I think he's listening to this uh, webcast. And this is the presentation on the reproduction of Miat Miatovich uh, phonograph records on Belgrade radio uh, from 1930 to 1933. Uh, so, um, Miat Miatovich uh, was born in 1887 and died in 1937. And he was a famous singer and a professional lawyer from Belgrade, now Serbia. He was one of the most prolific recording artists in the first Yugoslavia, currently with 177 documented recording slides. Uh, he recorded for a number of labels. His master's voice, uh, Edison Bell, Pencala, Audion, Homocord, uh, Columbia, Gramophone Concert Record, and Pate. Uh, during our research on Miat Mijatovic, we gathered a lot of qualitative evidence about his public performance, radio appearances and popularity. However, we have uh, been also looking for quantitative data. For instance, we wanted to know what were his most popular songs and recordings. We knew that his records were regularly played on radio, but we strive to understand which ones were the most popular. Unfortunately, direct data about, for instance, number of records produced or sold or results on public opinion polls either do not exist or haven't been preserved. Therefore, our approach is to use published radio programs of Belgrade Radio that contain detailed lists of reproduced uh, phonograph records as a proxy. As a primary source for our research, we use the Radio Belgrad Nedelni Illustrovani Časopis, a weekly magazine published in Belgrade and containing detailed listing of uh, weekly radio programs. The scanned copies of the magazine are available at the digital repository of Serbian National Library. Unfortunately, these data exist in the form of scanned images with no search capabilities. Therefore, we had to resort to manual browsing of particular issues and typing the relevant data. And our methodology is uh, as follows. Uh, uh, we extracted and systematized information about uh, reproduced Miat Mietovic recordings, as will be explained further in the presentation. Um, the listings of the radio programs uh, were very detailed in the period from the October 1930 till December 1933, and that's why we restricted ourselves to this period. Before and after this period, only summary statements, for instance, concept Gramofonski Plocha, Plochis Domace Fabrica Edison Bel Pencala, could be found in published programs. Uh, uh, what we did, we, in addition to data about Miat Mietovic songs, also extracted the total number of national songs recordings reproduced every day from 1931 till 1933. And in addition, we did a detailed list of other musical performance of national songs in 1931, 1932, and 1933. And just to note what is a national song here, this is either a folk song or a, a folk song which was actually uh, um, uh, inspired, uh, I mean, uh, the work of a composer, educated musician inspi inspired by a folk song. And what we did, um, we did statistical analysis, trying to see what is the dynamics of publishing, uh, of actually reproducing Miat Mijatovic songs, and to document better and quantify his presence on Radio Belgrade, Radio Belgrade uh, programs. Um, uh, how, how we approach all of this? Basically, this is an example of uh, a radio program that would appear uh, in Radio Belgrade uh, uh, magazine. So what we can see here first the date, and then we look at the time of, of a particular program. Then we are trying to identify the type of a program, and this is basically the title of the broadcast. And based on this, we conclude this is actually folk music, and also it's on phonograph records. And since this is now what interests us, we're going to delve further. 
basically, the records are typically shown in pairs. Why? Because it's essentially the side and the flip side of the same record. And they are by, denoted by A and B. And then we can see the song titles and a label. Sometimes the label does appear, which is, of course, makes our life easier. And sometimes it, it, it's missing. And then we can see what we call internal catalog number. So this is not a catalog number that would appear in uh, his master's voice catalog. We assume there was another catalog which might have been used by his master's voice distributor, uh, by which somebody who would like to buy this record could go, and, hey, I need a record number 25, give me that record, and they would get the record. However, this record is not, pre uh, this, uh, this, uh, this catalog is not preserved. So what we did during the course of our work is basically try to reconstruct this catalog for uh, national songs from his master's voice. And finally, if we were lucky, we would find a performer. But in the majority of cases, as you can even see from this exempt from the program, they are not exactly the performance appearing in, appearing in the program. So the question is, who really performs the song? So that resulted with a lot of research as we will actually show further. Um, during our work, obviously, I mean, from the raw data, we had to extract a lot of information. Uh, we try to deduce, especially for me, it's recording what accompanies them. Is it the piano accompaniment or a casserole accompaniment? Also, we try to get uh, the song origin and basically we restrict ourselves only to two categories as we will see later. And also uh, among the programs, we observe several categories like a concert, solo concert, which will contain only the phonograph records of Miet Mietovic, or listeners' wishes, which which could contain not only necessarily folk music, it could be mixed of folk music and popular music, but, but based uh, hopefully by the wishes of the radio listeners, and also the one which we call joint concerts, which contains uh, recordings from several artists, not just solely Miat Mietovic in this case. Uh, what we had to do is, in, as I said, in the majority of the cases, we had to find out who is the performer of the songs. And for that, we used several aids. For Miat Mietovic songs, we made our life easier because prior to this work, we'd published a discography of Miat Mietovic with uh, Danka, Danka Ljajic, who I hope is in the audience today. And uh, so we use our own discography. Uh, in other cases, if we know the recording is from his master's voice, then we would basically use a, a Kelly database to identify the pairings of recordings and hence to identify the performer. Uh, in case of Audion, there is a partial discography of Audion, uh, which was made by our late friend Milan uh, Milovanovic, so we utilize that one. And also for uh, Edison Bell Pencala uh, records, we use the, uh, the database which is being created in Zagreb, which was in great help. So uh, let me show example what we did uh, with a pairing of songs. So the internal catalog number is 135 on which Pochetta, Lana, Pelivana and Cernala Michael appears. So what we did, uh, we used the Kali database and we searched for Anna Pelivana. And when you do that, you can find several Anna Pelivanas. Usually Kali database contains uh, the takes too. So what we really try to do here, okay, is this Miat Miatovic song, uh, uh, a Miat Miatovic recording or somebody else's recording? So we can see here, actually, we could see here, there are uh, two sides, uh, or actually three sides of Miat Miatovic, but also two sides of Mila Lakic. So what we did, we look at uh, the record number AM2086 of Mila Lakic and try to see what is on the other side. On the other side, as we can see, is Cernala Maiko. So basically, which identifies that the pairing Prochetta Lana Pelivana and Cernala Maiko really corresponds to a phonograph record of Mile Lakic. And basically, this was the way how what we did with all his master's voice pairings, which we found in, in during this research. And as a result of that, basically, we created the table 
uh, which originally contained only uh, the, the performances of uh, Mia Tmietovic during this period, but we are now extending this. So basically now we have completed the whole 1932 and 1933, and we are actually working on filling the data on 1931 for basically all the records and all performers of uh, national songs during, uh, during that particular year. And as you can see, what we actually try to do is to create a little database with a title of a program, uh, with a category, is it Zhele uh, Slushalatsa or a concert? And also uh, the title of the song uh, and the origin, is it we restricted ourselves really only to possible, uh, uh, basically South Serbia and North Macedonia, which would be one label and the others are all the others. Uh, just for, for illustrative purposes, right? And also what we had is the publishing label and the accompan accompaniment, which we restricted only to two categories, piano, uh, piano accompaniment and orchestra. So what are the results? What are really the results of our work? Uh, what we found out, as I said, is that Mietovic recording appeared in two, in three major categories of programs, which I already discussed. And uh, this is the breakdown of uh, the number of times Miat Mietovic record recordings were played on radio program from uh, October the 1st, 1930 till uh, the end of 1933. And we broke it down into these three categories. So, I mean, we can definitely look at these numbers, but what we can see again, caveat is 1930 contains only three months, but then we compare 12 months on 1931, 1932 and 1933. And we can see that there is an increase in the number of, of the times the Miat Mietovic recordings were played on radio. And of course, in any uh, statistical data, I mean, you can say, okay, is it really 213 or 215? Probably there is a small couple of percent error in collecting this data because remember, everything was done manually. But I'm pretty confident that these numbers are overall correct. Uh, what we did further, we actually look a number of times the recordings were played by month each year. And what we really, I mean, first it's confirmed that the number increased from 1931 to 1933. What we also wanted to know is there is any season, seasonal variation in the number of times the recordings were played during the year. And basically, although it may look differently, when we do some statistical testing, we can see that there is really no any significantly uh, important trend month by month if we go from January till December in 1931 and 1932. However, when you do statistical testing for 1933, you can see that there is actually significant decrease of the number of recordings played from January where it was 33 till December where it was only 15. So a good question is why, but we don't have answers to this question. In fact, the nature of this research is that you usually come up with much more questions than answers but this hopefully will motivate people to continue researching and finding solutions. Um, uh, as I said, we tried to find all the rec uh, all the playbacks of uh, recordings uh, of national music and try to actually count what is the percentage of Miat Mietovic play recordings that appear there. And basically this percentage steadily increased from 1931 Till 1933. In 1931, approximately 6% of all the playbacks belong to Mietovic, while in 1933, 11% of all the playbacks of national songs belong to him, which means each ninth playback on a radio Belgrade in 1933 belonged to Miat Mietovic. Uh, this is outstanding. I mean, I will now tell you something which I did not put here. I did we did very detailed the study of 1933, and in 1933, Miat Mietovic throughout the whole year was the most uh, frequently played musician of these national songs on Radio Belgrade. So, however, 
uh, in the time when we did this presentation, we did not really have time to go through the whole year. So we decided let's go only one, year, one month in a year, comparing the same month in 1931, 1932, 1933. Let's try to find out who is the performer of each, each, each record of national music which was played on Belgrade Radio. And let's try to find out uh, what was the most performed. Right. And as we could see in uh, January 1931, uh, Miet Miatovic was the fourth by the number of times the recordings were played. Uh, the first place was the Orchestra of uh, King's Guard, and then Orchestra of Milan Atomica, and then uh, Orchestra of Stevan Bacic Trnda. In the second year, we look at 1932. Again, uh, the first place uh, was by, by uh, uh, the same orchestra of uh, the King's Guard. And uh, as we can see, the Stevan Bacic Trnda band went further, went the second place, Miatovic is now the third one. In 1933, Miatovic took the first place. So uh, basically, this data would indicate that he was at least among the most frequently played soloists of national music on Belgrade radio. And as I said, our further research will actually definitely determine who were the most frequently played. So uh, 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 I mean, performance in, in the period from 1931 till 1933. So now the logical question is, what about records? And that was actually the burning question that we had for a long time. What were really the most popular records of Miet Miet? No real data. I mean, we don't know the, uh, the, how, many, how many copies were sold. So this is as good proxy as we could see. So basically we counted the number of times a record was played during this period. And <clears throat> basically we calculated the frequencies for each record. And here are the results. So what were the most popular songs? As we can see, four of the five songs are from the southeast. <laughs> uh, four of the five songs are from southeast. Okay. Of of a South Slavic space, which I which is North uh, Macedonia and South Serbia. I mean, it's very dis difficult uh, to distinguish exact origin, uh, which really confirms why Miat was known at the time as an interpreter of South Serbian Sevdalink. Again, at those times, going without going into politics, I mean, the colloquial term for North Macedonia was also South Serbia, but I won't go there. Uh, uh, note also, I mean, if somebody really looks at the frequencies, and this is just for mathematicians, right? Uh, the frequencies do not follow so-called zip distribution, which is interesting because normally you would expect from the number of uh, for the frequencies of of reproduction uh, to follow this distribution. So that's another interesting fact which requires definitely further research. Now, how about uh, playbacks by label? Uh, the, this graph on the right side shows the number of playbacks of Miat Miatovic recordings by year from 1930 in October till the end of 1933 and also by label. We can see that his master's voice was predominant label and consistently present in programs. The catalog numbers and the distributor, uh, which was in Belgrade, Yefta Pavlovich and Company, were announced in Radio Belgrade magazine listings, uh, presumably for advertising purposes as a part of a commercial deal between the magazine and the distributor. Mietovic recordings on other labels, for instance, Audion and Columbia and uh, Edison Bell Pencala, appear in programs only sporadically. And it's very important to point out, at least in this period, unlike his master's voice, the label of Edison Bell Pencala records was not mentioned in uh, printed radio programs. So basically, you would see a recording which, according to the pairing of 
of, of songs is from Edison Bell Pencala, but it was not announced as such. Uh, in this period, we did not see any recordings uh, of Miat Mietovich or anyone else for that matter from Home Accord, and we did not see any mechanically recording recordings of Miat Mietovich. Know that he did record uh, for Pate and Gramophone Concert Record in 1910 and 1911. Of course, mechanically those times. Um, Mietovich finished his recording career uh, at the end of 1932. So at the time when we look at, and especially in 1933, all of the sites which were recorded for his master's voice or Odeon or Columbia or Edison Bell uh, would be available, but not all of them did appear in radio programs. For instance, uh, he did record uh, for his master's voice, Una Fortuma uh, Lacrima, but uh, this never got reproduced. Likely, it was not typical for Mietovich's recorded report, a repertoire. Um, uh, what was really re uh, reproduced? It did not uh, apparently depend only on the song's name and accompaniment, but also on label. For instance, uh, there is a song, Nastruga uh, Ducan Da Imam, which was accompanied by orchestra of Stevica Nikolic, that was reproduced from his master's voice. But the same song, which was accompanied by Stevica Nikolic, but on Odeon label, was never reproduced. So it didn't really matter what is the song and who accompanies that. It also mattered what was the company that issued it. Um, several songs uh, that appeared on Columbia did not get reproduced in this period, Belladonna, Pochettelana, Pelivana, and so on and so forth. But these songs were reproduced from other labels, most notably from his master's voice. Um, from um, Edison Bell Pencala, the situation is similar. I mean, if you look at the repertoire recorded by Edison Bell Pencala with piano accompaniment and uh, his master's voice in uh, July 1927, you would see there is an overlap, but while almost all recordings with piano accompaniment uh, appeared in the radio program, if they came from his master's voice, only two records with piano accompaniment from Edison Bell Pencala appeared uh, on the radio program. And also just for uh, an interesting thing, uh, I mean, there are two songs from uh, Edison Bell, which never appeared, and I would assume because of... Uh, uh, less serious uh, and sensitive text, especially or Alile Kladushko Kopile. I mean, this is an interesting one by Ipsa. Um, unfortunately, I don't have too much time, but we did a lot of comparisons and tried to see uh, what happens with the percentage of songs from South Serbia and North Macedonia during the years, and what happens with the percentages of songs with piano accompaniment during the years. And we see that there is significant changes in these, in these percentages. For just for an example, in 1933, uh, only 54% of playbacks corresponded to the songs with piano accompaniment, while in 1931, it was 73%. Again, question why, why, why? And does this indicate shift of taste at listening public? Also, we look at other things. Uh, the difference uh, in, uh, in, in, in the pre presence of songs from South Serbia and North Macedonia and with piano accompaniment in the, so in the, in the programs Želje Slušalac and others, which shown and found significant difference. And the question is really, do these Želje Slušalac programs really indicate popularity or songs, or they were just used to promote uh, some songs of interest to the publishers the other way. Conclusions. So basically, I mean, you can read all of this, right? So we found out that Miat Mietovic was significantly present on the radio programs, and we were able to quantify this presence, qualifying him among the most prevalent singers in, in the playback repertoire. We found out which songs were the most popular with respect uh, to the number of playbacks. We found out that the most frequent was, uh, were the playbacks from Freeze Master's voice. And we were able to actually compare the frequencies with respect to the accompaniment and the origin. Uh, and we actually confirmed that there is a dominance of songs from South Serbia and North Macedonia that we really expected. 
Uh, what are the next steps? As I indicated already, is comprehensive analysis of all the performers and performings from 19, in fact, it will be from 1931 till 1933. And what is really the open question here is what really guided the, song, uh, the frequencies of playbacks? Is it really popularity or the influence of the publishers or maybe even what is called here payola? The, the, the direct impact of influential performers. Finally, I would like to thank the great team from, from your institute who organized this conference. I would like to thank our collaborator, Danka, and Nikola Zekic, a great guy, my friend, our friend who worked with us and who has been working with us. And last but not the least, late Milan Milovanovic, our great late friend who was, initiated all of this research and to, we owe a lot. Thank you very much, guys.